Hi everyone, good afternoon. It is Sarah Shipton here from Scrapbooking with Sarah and I'm coming live to you on Tuesday, February 6, 2024 for this week's Technique Tuesday class. And being February, we all know that that means we have a new paper collection to share and get super, super excited about. So I cannot wait to showcase this beautiful collection with you. Hi, Sonia. Thanks for joining us. I'm also going to be drawing January's weekly scrapbooking challenge winner <laughs> for the month. That was a bit of a mouthful, right? So um, I have my ice cream container here and I have all of my entries for those of you that participated in the weekly scrapbooking challenges for January. Some of you have tickets in there. You've got bonus tickets in there as well. Um, and I thank you for participating and joining in on the challenges each week and also encouraging one another in our scrapbooking group as well. I'm really enjoying um, seeing that and building the community amongst all of us, which is one of the reasons I love what I do so much. Hi, Mel. Thanks for joining us. Have you guys taken a little um, afternoon tea break <laughs> at work? Alrighty, so let's get straight into it. This week's challenge is from the Make It From Your Heart Volume 3 book. We are up to challenge number or pattern number, I should say, excuse me, pattern number 28. It's on page 60 of your Make It From Your Heart book and we are in the seven photos stage, which I love because the more photos I can get on my scrapbooking layout, the better. But I really love that this layout doesn't look overcrowded and too busy. Sometimes like lots of photos on the layout can make it look a little bit, um, you know, like overwhelming. But I really, really love this particular layout. We've got um, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven square photos. So these are three by three inches in size. And I've actually added a flip flap over here. I don't know. I'm going to hold this up closer to the camera in a moment. But I've got a little collage photo on here. I'm going to share that with you today. And I've popped that into a flip flap. So I've actually ended up with an extra two photos on my layout. We could say even four because these are smaller photos that I've cut down to fit on the back of this three by three inch photo as a little collage. So I'm going to share that with you today. But as you can see here, seven photos on the layout. It doesn't look too overcrowded or, um, you know, overpowered in any way. And I think what's helped with that is this really subtle design in the background with the pattern paper. So February, we have a new paper collection. The paper collection is called Sweet Memories. It is in your January, February catalogue. If you don't have a hard copy of this, you can view the catalogue on my website, sarahshipton.closetomyheart.com.au. There's a digital version of it on my website up the top under the More tab. Um, and I will pop a link in the comments below at the end of the video so you can access the online version of the catalogue. So a really beautiful paper collection we've launched for the month of February. These are all of the beautiful colours up here that coordinate. So we've got Mulberry, Periwinkle, Mist, Sage, Mink and White Daisy. So this paper collection would suit, as you can see, obviously wedding photos. I love um, that the very um, mild mulberry tone here in the pattern paper and on the stickers here. And I've also used the mulberry shimmer brush as well um, on my layout. It's very subtle, but it just nicely coordinates with my bride's my bride's made dresses, the colour there. So this is mine and Darren's wedding day, which was just over 20 years ago. We had our 20th wedding anniversary on January 17. And these particular photos, I want to tell you, so 2004 was the year that we got married and this is pre-digital, kind of like the explosion of pre-digital cameras. So I was still using a film camera at this time and most of my guests at our wedding were also using film cameras. I did have a couple of friends that had already converted to digital. But what happened, obviously we had a professional wedding photographer on our wedding day and I got a package with that and all those photos are in, they're all five by seven inches in size and they're all in folders that were part of our package with the wedding photographer. 
But of course, I took my own photos, my guests, family, friends took their own photos. And what happened was we ended up with all of these extra photos from our wedding day that were really candid. Some of my friends printed doubles. They kept copies for themselves and then gave me all of their doubles. And then what I did, because I've been scrapbooking for a really long time, back then how we scrapbooked was you actually cropped to the photo, not to the page. So what we would do is we would cut all of our photos down into these shapes. Some of you might remember these oval and circle type shapes that we used to cut our photos down into. We would crop to the photo, not to the page. So the way that I scrapbook now is I'm actually cropping, um, I'm cropping to the page. So I'm doing my pattern and then my photos have to be cut down to a certain size in order to fit on my scrapbooking pattern. So what's happened is I've got all of these photos here, as you can see, that are in all these different shapes. Um, this one here, like I've cut that down in a, in a rectangle type shape there. All these photos that I've cut down into different shapes that I haven't done anything with over the years because I'm not scrapbooking like that anymore, right? And these photos were just literally sitting in a box. So when we started with this particular paper collection, I knew straight away that these, my wedding photos were going to coordinate really nicely with this. So what I want to say to you is that quite often when we are cropping our photos down into two by two inches or three by three inches, we have a little bit of a panic fest because obviously today we know how to take better photos, right? We've got smart devices. We use the full frame on our phones or whatever we're using. Most people now are taking photos with their phones. And so we don't really have the option to cut our photos down into these smaller two by two and three by three inch sizes anymore because we are taking better photos and we've got the full frame of the photo in our phone. Um, so most of our photos now are four by six inches in size that we're printing, but it's much harder these days to um, cut your photos down. As you can see here, I've got these beautiful portrait photos. I've got these family photos here. You can see how I'm using the full frame of my photo here. There's not really much I want to cut down. I don't really want to cut these photos down. And so then we end up with this kind of dilemma that when we come to scrapbook now, it's like, well, my photos are too big and I don't want to cut them down into three by three. So this is where I would encourage you to maybe go back and look at some of your printed photos that you might have sitting in packets or drawers or boxes. They might be in older albums. Um, they might just be in a photo organizer. You might have used previously a photo organizer that you've got your photos sitting at home already in boxes. And you can pull them out and you can do something with those. So I was able to cut my photos right down get rid of all of that waste of space, get rid of all of that background noise and end up with these really beautiful three by three inch photos where I'm literally just focusing on my subject. And this particular layout is of us signing our marriage certificate with our wedding celebrant and having our two witnesses present with us as well. And an interesting story. So when it's come to do my journaling here, um, I've got a three by four inch journaling box and quite typically you will note that I will line my rules in quarter inches to do the journaling because I want to get lots on there. But oh, I guess with my wedding layout, I just wanted it to be perfect and I decided instead to do half inch um, lines here with my journaling and I've been pretty factual in my journaling, signing our marriage certificate with our wedding celebrant, Sylvan Bonnet. It was a silent T. I think he was, oh, was he French or Swiss? Well, we didn't pronounce the T. I remember that. So Sylvan Bonnet and witnesses Andrew Donker and Shelley Pickup. Now, an interesting story. Our witnesses were actually the people that introduced Darren and I to one another when I was 17 years of age. So at that time, Andrew, who was Darren's best man on our wedding day, was Darren's best mate. And Shelley is my best friend since high school. We were 14 years old when we met. And Andrew and Shelley used to date and they introduced Darren and I to one another when I was 17 and still in year 12 at school. And so I haven't journaled that part of the story there. And I'm kind of a little annoyed, a little annoyed because, you know, that is really such a significant part of us coming together, but why we chose them to be our witnesses on our wedding day as well. So I've got some smaller photos here. So how did I come up with this little collage here of these smaller photos? 
So I've got my three by three inch um, flip flap here. Okay, so you can buy these in packs of 10 for $10 off the top of my head. I'll pop the link to all the flip flaps in the comments at the end of the video. But I had these three by three inch photos here. So we're signing the certificate. We're up and leaving the table. And then, of course, I had all of these extra small photos, right, that I'm never going to put them in my album like this, okay? So I actually found four photos that were probably, I want to say this size. So here we go. Here's a good example of one here. This size here. I was actually able to cut my photo down because I don't want this oval shape. I just really wanted a square of what was happening here. If you can see up really close, there's all this stuff going on around us and Darren and I are having this conversation here. I love it. And so what I was able to do here was I cut, uh, I got four photos that were in oval shape and I cut them down to one and a half by one and a half inches and then that enabled me to make this little collage on the back of my three by three inch photo, okay? So I don't want you to rule out, if you've got photos, I know some of you have been scrapbooking with me for a really long time. If you've got photos like these sitting in your packs or boxes where you have already pre-cut them and you haven't yet done anything with them, don't be afraid to crop them down. I mean, like this is a perfect one here. I don't need this lady's back and her head in my photo. This would have been a perfect little photo to cut down into that two by two inch or in this case here, I've cut down and made this little collage. So you can see here, we've got our witnesses that are signing the certificate. Um, I'm having a little bit of a laugh with the wedding celebrant and then we're posing as a photo here with our bridal party afterwards. Now I have to tell you, these photos were taken 20 over 20 years ago, girls. And even still, it wasn't until like I went back and looked and it's like, oh my gosh, yes, I remember that. And this is what photos do, right? We forget things until we relive that moment or we relive a memory through looking back at our photographs and obviously reading the stories that we've journaled okay so I wanted to give you that little tip there don't be afraid to cut your photos right down make little collages I bet that you've got lots of old photos sitting in packs and drawers and boxes where you can cut them right down because you've got all of this waste of space in the background of your photo and you know back then we didn't know what our photos were going to turn out right right until we had actually um, put that roll of film in to be developed and then pick those photos up. That was almost always the most exciting part, racing to the, the Photoshop afterwards to get your photos. So I wanted to give you that little tip there with those collage photos and I will definitely be inspired now to do something more um, with these leftover photos. Now I'm sure you're thinking, oh my gosh, I can't believe you haven't scrapbooked your wedding album already. I definitely have done big portions of my wedding album for sure. But over the years, as we've had new paper collections come out, I've scrapbooked other photos that I have, like all of these extras, the doubles and the copies, just sitting in a box. Um, I've got them out and I'm doing something really special with them. So a good reminder for you that you do not need to scrapbook in chronological order. Just because it is February 2024 does not mean you need to be printing your photos now. If you feel inspired or drawn to go back because we've released a paper collection and some older photos you've got, if you feel inspired to create with those, and I really would encourage you to do them because having those photos printed and on a layout is better than having sitting them in a box where that story is not being told. Now, the artistic technique that I have done this week is using the um, shimmer brushes. So I want to share the shimmer brushes with you and I'm going to give you a little bit of a demo on those today. Um, in your essentials catalog, so this is the close to my heart essentials catalog, runs from September last year through to the end of August this year. On page 16, we've got our range of shimmer brushes. I'm going to pop a link in the comments section after I post this video because there are still a heap of color shimmer brushes that are on my website that you can purchase but are not actually listed here in the catalog, okay? So these are colors that we are going to be phasing out but we still have them currently in stock. Now, if you are a VIP customer, you can redeem your VIP credits on these shimmer brushes because these are an item that you can spend your VIP credit on. You can buy your shimmer brushes individually for $11 or as a bundle where you get all 20 for 210 
If you're just starting out with your shimmer brushes, the biggest tip I want to give you is don't feel that you do need to get all of them right at the get-go. If you're just starting out, my suggestion would be gold for sure and also clear, very popular, those two colours. And then you can build on your collection as you are... Um, um, you know, introducing other colour palettes into your scrapbooking. So um, some of our shimmer brushes are, um, well, all of our shimmer brushes, sorry, are actually named after the coordinating cardstock colours that we have in our scrapbooking range. So we have 40 different colours and we've got, as you can see, candy, apple, papaya and so forth and so forth. The colours of the shimmer brushes are designed to coordinate with our cardstock and with your ink pads. So you know that everything is going to look fabulous. As I mentioned, one of the coordinating cardstock colours with the Sweet Memories paper collection is actually Mulberry. So I pulled out my Mulberry um, shimmer brush and what I have done here just very, very um, lightly is, and it might be tricky to see in the camera, but I have um, actually coloured on top of the mulberry flowers with my shimmer brush. So in the light, it gives us really beautiful shimmery effect. I've done it in the middle of this flower here on the sticker. That one's just been popped up with some 3D foam tape. I've colored here as well on the flower. And then I've colored in some of the other um, flowers here using that shimmer brush. I've done that also on this side here. So I didn't want to go too crazy. I did introduce the sage here and that was quite dark and I had periwinkle, but I thought, you know what, I'm just going to pick one color and I'm just going to run with that. So it was the mulberry that I actually went with. And because this pattern has in is incorporating three of our different um, colors from this particular color palette, I really just wanted to showcase one color and you can see that where I've colored over it with the shimmer brush, it stands out a little bit more so the eye is naturally going to be drawn to that. And having this pattern paper at the bottom of your scrapbook layout um, is where the eye will naturally gravitate towards and it just kind of gives you that um, solid bulk area where it, um, I guess what I'm trying to say is like the heaviness of the page. It kind of just um, evens it out and looks really gorgeous. So what I've done then is I've kept the rest of the layout itself not super busy, okay? I've got a little title sticker at the top here. Um, I did actually try with the shimmer brush to go over the letters and I didn't like the look of it, so I've ended up sticking the sticker that means that you can always fix your mistakes, girls, or something you're not happy with. I've ended up popping the sticker over the top of that and then I've just grouped some little... Um, clear sparkles around the outside of that and what that does is um, just creates a little embellishment cluster these are a pack of the clear sparkles that you can purchase you can never go wrong with those down the bottom here as well I've just popped one of the stickers these stickers were left over from my scrapbooking workshop kit this one here has got a um, date sticker so I've popped that up with some 3d foam tape and put the date of our wedding on there again using the clear sparkles as a cluster embellish embellishment cluster with the journaling box that's being cut in three by four inches um no sorry the periwinkle cardstock is three and a quarter by four and a quarter and then i've put the white cardstock over the top in three by four inches a little sticker over the top the flower on top of that in um using 3d foam tape I have used the Mulberry Shimmer Brush just to very lightly colour inside there. And then again, some of those clear sparkles. This captured sticker, all these stickers were left over from my scrapbooking workshop kit. Um, this one's been popped up with some 3D foam tape as well. And I've popped a little clear sparkle right in the middle of that camera there and a couple more um, underneath. So a beautiful layout of our wedding day. And I've got a flip flap on the top. I'm just going to slide that back into here so you can see how that works you want to make sure that you've got your scrapbook layout in the sleeve before you stick your flip flap over the top of it so you can actually align your flip flap right over the top of the photo that you want to cover the flip flap itself is three by three inches so the same size as your photo and we've cut the photo mat at three and a quarter by three and a quarter so when you've got your flip flap over the top you can still see your periwinkle cardstock underneath as a photo mat so i totally love that 
Now, with the Sweet Memories paper collection, you can, of course, purchase your components individually. So you can get your papers on its own. You can get it with a sticker pack. You can get coordinating cardstock and then some embellishments. So if you buy your things separately, these three items here as the get-go, usually around the $40 to $50 mark, um, and that will give you each of those three items there. And then all you need to do is pair that up with your how-to pattern book and you can create scrapbooking patterns using your pattern paper, cardstock and embellishments and, of course, the stickers as well. We have a coordinating card making set with a thin cut for those of you that are into card making. And for those of you into scrapbooking, we've got a scrapbooking stamp and thin cut set. This one is going to be really popular for my scrapbookers. As you can see here, we've got a beautiful heritage photo. I'm actually going to recreate this layout. So stay tuned for this month because we're going to do some work with that. I've got one single photo of I don't know if it's a great grandmother or a great aunt. I'd have to have a look at the back of the photo. I'm not really usually a fan of one photo per page, but in this particular instance for heritage scrapbooking, you might only have one photo of an ancestor that you want to scrapbook and document and pop into your um, heritage or family history or family album. Um, so that particular technique works really well when you've only got the one photo and you need your layout to be quite decorative and ha have all of this... Um, decorative embellishments there and then of course we've got our scrapbooking kit i have posted a reel on my instagram highlighting the three scrapbooking layouts and i will pop some photos in our scrapbooking group as well because i have created these three layouts um, here from the scrapbooking workshop kit and we did some um, embellishing with the distress oxide ink in victorian velvet and using our blending brushes so stay tuned because i'll be sharing some videos throughout the month um, with that technique as well but let's have a play i've got some scrap white daisy cardstock here and i'm just going to pop this on my versa mat and so i want to start by talking about uh, where did that go your shimmer brush when it comes to you. So your shimmer brushes will come in this plastic um, bag adhered down. And you'll note here that it's got this yellow ring through the middle here. This is actually just to safeguard it while it's in its shipping process, uh, making its way from our warehouse to you so that's to prevent the shimmer brush from um, leaking or exploding and you're getting that all over everywhere so don't be alarmed when that comes you do actually need to remove that so what we're going to do is we're going to unscrew the well so this here is where the ink will come down into and the brush itself uh, will fill with ink and you'll color that we're going to take this little yellow piece of plastic off and you can just throw that out and then you need to screw the inkwell back onto the top of your shimmer brush so and you'll hear it click okay when you pop that back on what you want to do when you put your lid on and off is you are going to lift the lid on and off you don't need to unscrew the lid itself because what has happened in the past is people have inadvertently um, twisted that and then they've undone <laughs> the um the inkwell container and they've ended up with shimmer <laughs> shimmer ink everywhere okay and let me tell you girls if you get that shimmer ink everywhere it is pretty much a nightmare trying to get it off of like clothes or a tablecloth or anything like that so when you get your shimmer brush you'll need to remove that little yellow fluoro piece of plastic tighten your inkwell on top like such and you just are popping your lid on and off there is a little push tab here, so you can actually, we can shake it up. You'll hear it. There's a ball in there. We're going to shake that up and we're just, oh, here we go. Look, it's already coming out. Okay. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. So um, this is the gold. <laughs> so the ink will actually flow down into the um, brush itself and then you can use that shimmer brush to put over your stickers, your picture my life cards. You can put it over your paper. Um, you can put it over die cuts. The other thing I love about our shimmer brushes as well is that they're all labeled with the color. So they didn't always come like that. And that can be a little bit tricky when you start investing in lots of shimmer brushes 
to remember which one is which. So this was Mulberry. You can see here the Mulberry one um, doesn't have anything on there, but I just remembered that that was um, Mulberry. So what I'm going to do here is just share some of the colours with you. So um, this is the Mulberry one. I don't need to squeeze that because this one's been used a couple of times already, so the ink is already there in the well. So this is Mulberry. This is Journey. This is our colour of the year, the Journey one. Um, now, if you do get ink, you can see here as I'm squeezing that, um, it's coming out. Oh, that's lots of shimmer there. It dries relatively quickly. You can see as I push that ink out. And then it ends up with like this really gorgeous shimmery look on there. You can use it on um, journal boxes. You can use it as um, like a base underneath your embellishment cluster. So I could have, what I could have done here is I could have shimmered underneath this title just here on the edge and then stuck that sticker over the edge there as well. So there's lots of different things you can do. This is um, periwinkle. Oh, no. Is that periwinkle? That's quite dark, isn't it, for periwinkle? Um, oh, see how quick that dries, girls? And you can see the shimmer on that as well. If you do get shimmer on your mat, so you want to have your Versa mat down, or what would also be a really good idea is to have your all-purpose mat down. Um, so if you haven't invested in an all-purpose mat, um, having that particular one down on your workspace as well might be good because you don't want to end up with shimmer everywhere but what I will do to take that off my Versa mat I'll just get a um, baby wipe and I'll just wipe that over the top um, if you want to pop your all-purpose mat down you can put this face down on the side that um, is tacky so this is double-sided one side you're going to work on and then the other side um, you can put face down this is melon, I think. Oh, no, okay. This is not melon. I want to Oh, this might have been um, papaya. This looks like papaya. So it almost looks like a water brush, yeah? And so many different things that you could use this for with your artwork. And if you are going to be using... Oh, actually, no, it's not papaya. It's peach because I pulled this out. I want to give you the heads up that our paper collection that we have got coming for March, you are going to be using your shimmer brush for the scrapbooking workshop kit um, and also some other layouts that I've already created. You'll get to see them if you're one of my VIP customers. I've sent you an invitation to my open house on February 23rd. You'll get to see the March, April catalog and paper collection Um first so we are going to be using this color shimmer brush the peach one we're going to be using this um, with our papers for March so I do have other colors shimmer brushes I've got them um, in there aside oh the little this one came off I've got them sitting um, in my organizer just here on my desk so lots of different colours that you can invest in. There's 20 in the catalogue, but don't forget on my website, there are a heap of other um, colours available still. So I'll pop some links in the comments after that so you can go along and have a look at the beautiful colour shimmer brushes. So again, I've used that just here. I've very lightly gone over the pattern on the paper with my Mulberry Shimmer Brush. And it kind of has given it that really gorgeous watercolour effect, but also a shimmery one as well. So I hope you have enjoyed this week's Technique Tuesday class, ladies. I look forward to sharing the other sweet memories layouts with you. I will post some photos in our scrapbooking group. Have a great week if you're going to participate in the challenge. I can't wait to see what you come up with. And for everyone else, if there's anything I can do to help you with your photos, please don't hesitate to reach out. I'd love to help you get started. Have a great week, everyone, and thanks for watching.